Behavioural finance is a whole field of work that tries to take explicit account of the impact that emotion has in shaping investment decisions. Now, as a fund manager, we've observed certain behaviour that we think, in part, can be explained by some of this field of behavioural finance. And I want to use an example to bring that out. Now, this may not apply to you, but as I said, we've observed it from time to time. I'm going to use an example of, let's say I'm an investor, and I've decided that, for me, a balanced fund, a mixture of shares, bonds, cash, etc., really suits what I'm trying to achieve over time. And I'm quite prepared to buy that investment and hold it for a number of years so I can use it in my retirement. But I'm also, going to, uh, I'm also going to assume that I've just lived through a very deep downturn and I've started to question and second guess whether that was the right decision for me. So what I want to do is navigate a, a storm that I'm seeing is building, protect the portfolio by switching into cash. Now what I'm going to assume is I only make that decision if the market has fallen such that my balance fund has given me a negative return for one year. Okay, I'm now not, not certain what the future holds. Let me navigate the portfolio, protect it, move to cash, sit in cash until I think it's an appropriate time to go back to what I consider my long term portfolio. Now the test that I'm going to apply to move back is my old portfolio is now looking okay again because it's delivered a positive one year return. I want to pause there and just say, first of all, how logical was I in making that decision? Okay, I wanted to protect my portfolio. I know that the, over the long term I want this balance fund for me, but if I wait until the balance fund has gone up, it's akin to waiting, I want to buy something, but let's wait and see until its price goes up, then I'll buy it again. So, you know, it's not that logical, but let's say I've done that. Now, I want to explain what actually shaped my decision making such that I, if, if I did that, why? This is where behavioural finance, we think, reasonably useful. History sometimes can actually hurt us as well as help us. I say that because whenever deep crises occur, history has a neat way of recording them. It actually shows all the warning signs and then what happened. So we sort of get and understand why things happened. But if you're living through a current downturn or a crisis, history is yet to record it. Therefore, we're not convinced that it's the same. We can't learn from history. We, we, we almost feel this time it's different. Now the danger of that is we don't learn from history. History tells us, for example, in share markets, when they go down, generally they go back up. It also tells us you want to be invested in the first year of a recovery because a lot of the returns occur in that year. But if I'm feeling that this time it's different because I don't quite get what's happened, I need more evidence before I'm prepared to go back into the portfolio. The risk of waiting for more evidence is that that one year return has come and gone. So if I actually feel that I cannot rely on history anymore or facts and figures but rather my gut feel because it's different this time, we think that can sometimes distort the investment outcome we're looking for. That's why we think behavioural finance is reasonably relevant. Behavioural finance also helps us explain another observation that we see from time to time, the sort of tendency to buy high and sell low. So what would contribute to that? Herding is actually, in part, helps explain why that behaviour occurs. Herding is essentially peer pressure in the financial world. Now this really runs rampant when we have no great feel where markets are heading. So we tend to be very comfortable to buy when everyone else is buying, and also sell when everyone else is selling, irrespective of whether or not the price is cheap or expensive. The other area that, that uh, behavioural finance helps us understand with this phenomenon is we tend to want to seek evidence that supports our own perhaps prejudiced view. So if you take a scenario where the markets have fallen deeply, uh, we, we think it might be the end of the financial world as we know it, we tend to ignore evidence that might suggest that there's a recovery. So we might have actually sold after a heavy fall in the market. Evidence tells us it's a cycle, it will get better, it could be cheap, it could be an appropriate time to buy, not sell further. But we actually might ignore that and seek out evidence that this is the beginning of a deep prolonged bear market, it might last four or five years, so we continually want to sell at the bottom even though the evidence that someone else has brought to us suggests no it's cheap, now's the time to buy. So behavioural finance actually helps us understand why we do take decisions that you know, might be counterintuitive and it might lead to some slightly better outcomes if we're aware of the real impact that emotions have in investment decision making.